Hi, I'm Cassie. And I'm Mariah. And this is the Cassie and Mariah Show, a podcast where two long-distance internet friends, that's us, discuss navigating their 20s through disability and chronic illness. Mariah, how's it going? Hi. It's going good. I feel like I, I don't know, I don't have much to report this week. I was booking a few markets, um... And one of the, one of the, I was having an issue with a market where like I would, I was, had to, um, you know, certain townships have certain regulations and things like that on like, you know, if you need a license to vend in a certain town or, you know, things like that. So there was a market that I applied to and didn't realize until after the fact that I would have to be fingerprinted by the police station in order to vend, which is very like, I've never dealt with before and a lot of other vendors I know haven't either because it's very like I said township based everyone has their own different rules so once I submitted my application for a vendor license for this town you know I was waiting for the police station to call me back and like the thing is too is that like when you get fingerprinted it's like an extra cost so like it was gonna probably be most likely 50 bucks and like I didn't really want to spend 50 bucks but it was also like do I spend 50 bucks or do I just not go to this market at all, but then like eat the vendor fee that I already paid and stuff? So the other day I get a call from the police station telling me that I don't actually have to get fingerprinted because since it's for one event, they said it's not necessary. And oh, I was thank like, God. thank you. Like, mm, yeah, because <laughs> I, because you know, like on top of like the stress of being fingerprinted, I've never committed a crime in my life, but you know, I still don't want to be fingerprinted. Um, I just didn't want to spend an extra fee and then also have to make an appointment, go to the police station, and then have to wait, like, another week for them to mail my license to me. Like, I just didn't want to do all this extra, like, all this extra time that was going to be um, taken up. I just didn't, I just didn't want to do it. So when the guy called me the other night, it was, like, 8.30 at night too when they called me to tell me I didn't have to get fingerprinted, which I was like, are, are you good? Why is you, why are you calling me so late? Um, and he was like, yeah, cause you know, you're only doing one event in town. You don't need to be fingerprinted. So, you know, we're just going to mail your license to you. Like you'll probably get it like next week. And I was like, slay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I'm glad that that worked out because I was very stressed about just trying to fit all of this stuff in before the vendor event was going on. So I'm glad that that worked out. Um, I am heavily invested in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game. I'm not even kidding when I say it's all I think about. It's all I do. Um, I am just, you know, it's like when you wait so long for a video game like this, it's like you just want to give all your time to it. (laughs) So I'm doing that. Um, I'm not even close to being halfway done with the game. I think because I just don't really have uh you know I just don't really have too much time to work on to like really progress the story but um I just have a lot of time to dilly dally and cook and kill enemies and stuff like that (laughs) and I'm also trying to work on my like social media usage I feel like it's so easy to get carried away and I know you have a lot to say about this I've been wanting to ask you this question and I don't know if it will expose you or not but I was wondering if you could tell us your screen time <gasps> oh she because I don't <laughs> mainly because I don't know if I believe that you're pro- like I mean like I like I have no concept of how bad your problem actually is <laughs> okay so let me reiterate and say that screen time also includes things like the map app on your phone so right when you're driving right so like you know when you're driving that's still considered using screen time i guess i was more curious like in terms of like category of like if you have like social media on your phone like <laughs> what it like what those categories are as opposed to your overall because like yeah I it's like I mean we FaceTime for over an hour every week and like we uh you know it's like I listen to my audiobook so it's like I totally right. get that where there's like things that are not yeah okay so for the week this past week it's up five percent the daily average is seven hours and 38 minutes Twitter in the past week was 14 hours and Twitter and messages are my most used apps. Messages make sense because audio messages, like the constant back and forth, right? So when I send you a 20-minute audio. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I got to be ready. I got to be present. I have to be present to listen to this. 
So then I have YouTube, which is six hours and 26 minutes. Instagram, Reddit, TikTok, Spotify. Which, okay, it's also interesting, the pickups for your phone. Like how many times mm-hmm. a day you pick up your phone. My daily average is 131. <laughs> um, first used after pickup is always messages. And then it's Twitter. Then it's Spotify, Instagram, which is crazy. Do you have Twitter notifications on? No. I haven't had Twitter or Instagram notifications on in so long. Oh, so that means, sorry, I, I guess I forgot kind of what it means because I haven't looked at it in a while. So it's just like the first thing you open after you pick up your phone. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, today for, let me see, actually, I'll go to like yesterday. Yesterday, so <laughs> yesterday my screen time was nine hours and 46 minutes. <laughs> and that wasn't even using things. That was most used messages, then Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Reddit, Safari. So like how long did you spend on Twitter yesterday? Twitter, two hours and 10 minutes. But my app limits are set to an hour. Mm-hmm. So I always hit ignore. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, that, and that, so that's my thing where I'm like, I have to figure out something else to do with my time. Because Twitter being two hours, 10 minutes, Instagram is one hour and 11 minutes. Um, and then the other apps, like, I don't really get too much, like, enjoyment out of really, like, I don't post anything on Reddit. So like, it's not like I'm getting notifications on there. My Reddit usage yesterday was 34 minutes. Mammy, social... I, I just can't believe social being 7 hours and 25 minutes yesterday. This is like as if I had a full-time job. Where <laughs> I... <laughs> I was posting and checking. It's actually hilarious. But uh, what's your... I So, okay. Are you like completely done with Twitter? Like what's the... Let us in. Well, so I'll speak to that in a minute, but I've had, um, I've had Twitter mostly off, I've had Twitter off my phone for quite a while. I had re-downloaded it for a bit, but that didn't last very long before I deleted it again, so, um, so it's not factored into my screen time, but, um, my week, which... I guess that would be this current week. So I'll look at last week, although they're pretty similar. Um, Or, sorry, this is confusing. Today's Saturday, so I guess this is most of my week. Um, uh, Was three hours and eight minutes daily average, which was down 12% from last week, which Mm. I think, uh, which I don't know how accurate that is in the sense that last week's average was three hours and 33 minutes, and we still have several hours left of today. So I don't know how relevant that is. Um, But basically, I average about three and a half hours a day um and so yeah I don't have Twitter on my phone so my most used um well here let me go to a day because I think that's more easy to understand uh today I've used messages for 46 minutes uh Instagram for 32 TikTok for 30 how did I use TikTok Oh, wait, sorry, that was yesterday. Uh, 46 minutes for messages, 32 minutes for Instagram, 30 minutes for TikTok. Because I think ye- yesterday or, I don't know, sometime this week I re-downloaded TikTok because, well, I'll get to that in a minute. And then, yeah, literally everything else is under, it's like 10 minutes or less and it's like other messaging apps or like my books and things like that. So, yeah, um, pretty uninteresting um except for here let me go back to weekly um my because you did weekly pickups right um yes i did weekly and then i did i looked at it's like daily average oh yeah yeah so my pickups uh this week my daily average was 78 uh with messages being the basically the main thing um and yeah i only really have notifications on for messaging apps so um yeah pretty pretty uneventful um yeah so um twitter ugh I have had such a decade-long relationship with twitter actually over a decade now um 
I just found myself so okay for some context I mean I have been like the thing I've been working on in therapy has been like prioritizing myself making time for myself and like doing things that like when I do have free time or when I do have a choice over how I'm spending my time like doing things that fill me up and like that was something that um, I had a very good therapy session this week and um, that was something that we talked about quite a bit was like how for pretty much over the past year I've been constantly pouring from an empty cup um, and when I would do things that w- that I would say would fill me up most of the time they were only putting like a couple drops back in right. um and so i had i've been thinking about this like i don't know that metaphor really works for me because i mm. often talk about doing things that fill me up um because i can like spiritually feel it um like when i spend quality time with friends or whatever it's like i can like genuinely feel myself like i literally am refueled from that Um, and so it's like, I've been thinking about that metaphor a lot, and I just found myself this week, whenever I would look at Twitter, I would get so upset about stuff that, not that the stuff didn't matter, but that, like, I mean, it would just be me watching other people have conversations and being upset about it, but I don't know how to explain, it was just dumb, it's, you're watching discourse, about like actual real issues in the world but it's like they're not getting solved on twitter.com even though I do think that it's like an important like like I do think like online activism online conversations do have a place in like how we see the world how we interact with each other how we discuss these issues but it just it was just constantly upsetting me and I think too ever since Elon Musk like took over twitter I do think that obviously the quality has dropped immensely. A lot of people have left Twitter. So even though I follow over a thousand people, I am not seeing over a thousand people stuff. And I do feel like in a similar way to the fact that I often use Twitter to rant about stuff going on in the world or speak up about issues or whatever, call things out. It's like a lot of the people I follow do the same thing. And as a result, it is just very draining to be on there I'm not being refueled by that at all and I realize that in fact it is continuing to pour from my cup if I'm leaving Mm -hmm. there feeling like less hopeful less I don't know just if I'm if I'm leaving Twitter feeling like I have less than I started with it's like ugh, that's that's not good because the whole reason I got addicted to Twitter or just like became a regular user of it was because of One Direction and back then I was literally using it for fun yeah um and for community and I just feel like when I was thinking about and journaling about like okay what do I give to Twitter and what do I get from Twitter and kind of realizing that I don't that a lot of the things that I used to get from Twitter I don't get anymore I don't feel like it's actually like much of a social network for me anymore literally um and then you know just some of the other things it's like all of these are things that I could get elsewhere in terms of news or um or just, like, connecting to the disabled community, etc. Like, those are all things that I could get either on other sites or in other aspects of my life. And I feel like one of the biggest things I have been using it for is kind of speaking up about miscellaneous things from my lived experience. Um, And so it's, like, basically I kind of just, like, looked at the different things and was like, okay, I could use TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn for these things or just talk to my friends or and so yeah I am trying to basically never go back on Twitter literally the only reason I plan to log back in is to tweet about every new episode of the show (laughs) um for at least for the rest of this season and um basically just be like um you know this like genuinely I do think that the podcast is one of the best ways to like hear what I'm thinking hear what's going on with me personally and professionally like 
it, it is very all-encompassing, so I'm kind of like, you know, if you want to, if you follow me on Twitter and you want to keep up with me, like, the podcast is kind of the place to be. And also, you're just, like, really cool and hot if you listen to the podcast. I mean, that's just a fact within itself. Like, that's just very given. If you listen to the podcast, you're a hottie. Like, who, you know, what can you say? Exactly. And so, yeah, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to be logged off forever. I was talking to some of my older friends earlier and being like, Oh, what should my quarter life crisis be because I turned 25 <laughs> this year and I've decided it's quitting Twitter. <laughs> I love that for you. That's a perfect quarter life crisis. Very new, like Gen Z new age type of thing. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Yeah, I, I, I will say it is genuinely hard. Um, I think part of it is that I have been using Twitter a bit as a coping mechanism specifically for feeling less alone, but it never helps and it usually makes me feel worse because Mm -hmm. you tweet about things and then people don't care and then you feel worse. Oh my god, yeah. And it's like, uh, Cassie, if you literally just text Mariah, she'll reply to you. (laughs) And you know what's so funny? I love getting your texts that are like, text not tweet and then it's like the colon and then you write something that I'm like yeah I relate to this (laughs) I will say that I did (laughs) okay are you guys ready for this I did text you something that I later tweeted anyway and it (laughs) flopped it flopped so hard and I don't you never replied to it either (laughs) wait was it the one about motocross (laughs) yeah yeah, because I never saw that movie. I was Damn like, it. I think I saw that text. I was like, I wonder if she'll elaborate on this. And then you did. No, <laughs> no, there is no elaborating. Man, you're, uh, you're, you told her deleting Twitter makes me want to do it so bad. I mean, at least get the app off my phone. Because, like, I do the same thing where it's like, I go on there for, like, serotonin boosts. And then when people don't like my tweets, I'm like, what's wrong, guys? You got to like my posts. Well, and, like, honestly, I think, again, with Twitter literally going downhill, it's, like, mm. a lot of the people I used to interact with on, la- oh, God, I was about to say something really depressing, um, and you know what, I'm still gonna say it, because we keep it real, we do. um, a lot of the people who used to like my posts are either dead or not on Twitter anymore, so, um, and now Elon Musk is deleting dead people's Twitter accounts, so, Oh, what a fucking horrible place to be. (laughs) No, like, I, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are not on Twitter. And, like, I I do think that, like, it has to do with the fact of, like, also when you're younger and, like, all your friends are kind of on Twitter at the same time or, like, on social media at the same time, where nowadays it's, like, what's an unemployed bitch supposed to do in the middle of the day? Go on Twitter. Who is not on Twitter? All my friends right now. Every time I've ever taken a quote-unquote social media break, which is primarily, if not exclusively, a Twitter break, because, like, I don't feel like I need to take a break from Instagram because it's right. pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Uh, But every time I take a break, I'm like, holy crap, look at all this time. And also look at how much of healthier decisions I make um, in terms of, yeah, how I decide to cope or like, oh, I can't procrastinate by going on Twitter, which I will (laughs) say. Uh, Yesterday, I I did some heavy lifting in terms of the procrastinating I did even while off Twitter. Um, By getting so much done, I transcribed the episode that comes out this week. I put away my laundry. I helped my mom water the flowers. I went and got the mail. And then all that was left for me to do was do my damn homework, which I did. But what a productive day. Oh, yeah, no, it would, but see, and that's the thing is, before, I wouldn't have done any of those things. I would have just gone on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, any days that I'm, like, actively trying to not go on social media or just, like, do my, uh, do my other things, I'm like, wow, there's actually so many, so much time in the day. Mm-hmm. There is time to get things done, because otherwise you're constantly, like, I don't know, I'm just constantly on my phone, and I will sit there, and I'll be like, wow, a half hour passed, and all I did was flip between Twitter and Instagram, And, like, I do think Instagram is the same. My feelings towards Instagram are the same, where it's not as fun on there. And, like, on my personal account, I don't follow too many people. So, like, if people aren't posting, then I don't see anything. And, like, my business account gives me too much anxiety to go on it frequently, so I don't. And then um, Twitter, it's just the same thing, where it's, like, I don't see friends post. I see, like, terrible content that Elon Musk is trying to show me, and I'm just, like, holding my eyes shut and turning away from it because I can't like I I just can't be on 
I can't be online in the way that I used to. Like, knowing how negative it is for my brain, I just can't do it anymore. It's not fun anymore. And, like, my TikToks for you page has completely changed, too, where it's, like, I see just a lot of, like, boring, like, neutral content of people that are just doing filters over and over again and stuff. And I just, I don't want to see it. So, I'm, like, this gives me nothing. And it's not, like, tailored to me anymore because I don't go on the app that much. So, the algorithm cannot make a personality yeah. out of me. Um, and, like, Reddit, like I said before, I don't post on it. So, like, I'll just look at some threads and stuff. But, like... I got a really bad spoiler for Yellow Jackets the other day. Didn't tag it spoiler warning. And it was like the front, you know, the, the title was the spoiler. And I was like, I, it pissed me off so bad because I haven't kept up with the most recent episodes. So I was like, I just got like, I, I didn't even know this character was back like in the scenes yet. And now there, something already happened to them. So I'm like, oh, like this is annoying. So like, I don't know, like social media is not giving me what it used to. So now I'm like, I guess I have to find things in the real world that make me happy. <laughs> like you could actually watch Yellow Jackets instead of just reading about exactly. it. Exactly. I feel like by being like, I'm actually quitting Twitter, it's very different than being like, I'm taking a break or mm -hmm. I'm trying not to go on it as much. Because instead, it's kind of like, um, I was one of the first people in my life to delete Snapchat. Um, I was a very early Snapchat deleter and oh my god it's so easy to just be like I don't use Snapchat I never downloaded Be Real it's very easy to just be like I don't use Be Real it is so easy and it's yeah I don't know it's it's a lot easier to just be like I literally don't go on it than to be like I'm taking a break from it because yeah. Like, I, people will peer pressure you. They'll be like, Cassie, you should just have Twitter on your phone. And I'm like, no, I literally can't. And um, I think that a lot of people are actually lately bringing out their worst selves on Twitter. And I think it's because of how bad it's gone downhill. No, I completely understand that. And like, I don't know, the thing with Be Real is like, that's an app I go on once a day, if that. Because it, I only go on when it's your time to be real. And like... The friends I have on there, it's, like, five people. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't see jack shit. Snapchat, yeah, I deleted that earlier this year because it was another thing of just, like, I don't know, you compare yourself to what other people are doing. You know, you're kind of having FOMO because you're like, oh, man, like, my friends are together or these people are together and I'm not with them. And it just became something where I was like, I just don't care about it. Like, I deleted it, never want to download it again. Um, and that's kind of how I want to be with social media apps. Like, once they're off my phone, I'm not just taking a break, like you said. It's like, I want to be done. Because it's, a lot of these apps just go downhill. Like, it just sucks that social media is just not the same way it used to be. And it's never going to be that way. And it's always going to constantly be changing. But on the bright side, I do feel like when, like, being off Twitter and stuff, like, I it makes me a more intentional communicator and I can't use social media to mass communicate to everyone I know and expect them to see it I because that was a big thing when I was journaling like okay what to do instead of Twitter and it's a lot of like just tell people in your life that <laughs> like who you care about them know you know and so yeah so now like my plan is Instagram for personal updates uh, LinkedIn for professional updates, the podcast for all of the above, and trying to get back into TikTok, kind of for stuff that I'm like, wow, I really would have totally posted this or whatever um, on Twitter or like just, I don't know, because I, I do feel like there, like there are a lot of people who have told me that they learned a lot from my tweets in terms of disability stuff. And it is a little scary to go back to posting that on TikTok because literally the reason I stopped using it is because I got bullied off the app, but, um, but I think it's worth it and I think I'll find, um, other, other people and, um, yeah, who knows, but, um, anyway, so that, yeah, quitting Twitter, I guess, was a big part of, of my week and then, um, yeah, last weekend, I had a great-ass weekend, I went to a rural organizing, like, um, gathering of people from around the state, uh, doing good work, um, and then on Sunday, I went to my friend's birthday, where we launched Model Rockets, and it was fucking yeah. exhilarating, one of them literally went up, and we never saw it again, it, 
<laughs> we never saw it again. It we we were because the thing is these things go so high, and I had no idea what to expect because I grew up with like stomp rockets that were like styrofoam. Just and, air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, these things no, these things go up like fifteen hundred feet, and like um, yeah, that one. It's like they would most of them would go up really high where you're like oh god I, I oh that's you know i can see the spec uh that one went up and you know there's like 30 of us nobody saw it and mind you there was wind but like you know even if it blew one way or the other it should be falling right we should see it <laughs> and um yeah so i hope it hit one of elon musk's satellites <laughs> that could have like hit anything <laughs> like it could like it most likely landed in a tree but like or well, on the top of somebody's we, house but we had a lot that landed in trees we saw them come down mm. <laughs> that's what kills me is i'm like we didn't even see it like drift off you know dramatically some like, say it's still up there in the, in the i air. was like i just everyone was just like where did it go like staring up and i was just like it went to space. <laughs> like, anyway. when you're on an airplane and a model rocket passes you by. And <laughs> I just, I'm like, did it, like, I don't know, did it explode into oblivion? Who knows? Um, some, yeah, some say it's still going. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was extremely joyous. And, um, and then, yeah, like I said, good-ass therapy session this week. Um, some pretty rough political stuff locally in the middle of the week. And then lots of homework to, to round it out. Um, but the big news, the big, big news is that Niall Horn is coming here next year, which at first when I saw the tour dates, I thought it was for this summer. So it's a good thing my friend said 2024 because I would have shown up. <laughs> <laughs> this July. Um, but the biggest thing is that it falls in the window between uh, my graduation and my birthday, which means if everything works out according to plan, Mariah will be here. So I'm buying tickets for me, Mariah, and Courtney next week, and it's going to be iconic. That's going to be amazing. What a, what a literally hot girl summer thing to go see Niall Horan with, like, the besties, you know? It's incredible i love I, that will have made it so i will have seen three fifths solo because Ooh. i see louis next month and i already have seen harry and uh yeah and i never want to see liam and i doubt we'll ever get to see zane so i was gonna say would you ever see liam i wouldn't no I absolutely not no <laughs> no i don't think he i feel like he probably wouldn't put on a good show anyway like, he seems like he's very, like, hey, guys, it's me from One Direction. <laughs> and, like, you're like, okay, play something. And he plays three songs and then leaves. I, I don't know. I can't even tell you what, like, a, an album of his is called or, like, any discography. Like, I think, I don't know, he has one song. Like, <laughs> I, I don't. I sorry, think he Liam. has an album. I feel like he does. At but, least. Like, you, you couldn't fool me. Like, I, I would think he doesn't. Like, because I literally can't think of what it would even be like. Like, I know yeah. Niall has a decent amount of music, and so does Louis and Harry, and, like, Zane has a few things, but <laughs> I don't know. They're just not in, like, my... They're just... They don't take up a lot of residency in my head. Like, the whole one As direction does. Shouldn't. But, you know... I don't know, man. <laughs> Did you mean Liam specifically? Liam specifically, yeah. Like... I don't really keep tabs on what he's doing, though. Ever since the Logan no. Paul episode, you know, of their podcast, yeah. I was like, come on, man. You're punching up at Harry? That was your bro. Like. Disgusting. And now he says he wants to get One Direction back to you there. Yeah, because the money pit's drying up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, gross. There's no way it's drying up. I'm sure they're still making money off that. Yeah, but, like, I feel like in terms of, like, what they could make if they did a reunion and comparing oh, himself yeah. to like what Harry Styles makes. The dude sold out oh, Madison yeah. Square Garden like the entire time he was there. Today's episode is what I like to call my Super Bowl. I am the Aaron Rodgers of this topic. <laughs> Uh, that's for all my football fans out there. He's on the Jets. We're going to have a good season, guys. Anyway, to talk about a different type of game. 
<laughs> this episode, we're talking about video games. We're talking about being a gamer girl. <laughs> video games are a D1 sport and you're a captain of the team. I am the captain of the team. I am the... See, I've always, like, if I had it... Again, I say, if I had it in me, bitch, you said that's about everything. If I had it in me, I'd love to be an esports gamer. But at what? <laughs> I have no idea. I just want to play video games. <laughs> but let's get let's literally just get right into it because that's the topic is being gamer girls i i feel like i'm gonna be you know i feel like you're usually interviewing me i'm gonna be interviewing you and add my own things along the way so let's go good grill me cassie if you could remember your earliest memory with video games what would it be like what kind of got you started into it what kind of what kind of kicked it off for you i mean i feel like i've been playing video games since i came out of the womb thanks um, because I genuinely can't remember a time not. Um, and I think it's because, I mean, culturally, they're just around. And, like, so, like, even, like, my parents, like, you know, like, my dad grew up playing Atari. Like, my mom would play what we called <laughs> squeaky balls. It was some game on the PC. And, um you know you would click the balls they would explode I don't know um or disappear I don't know they were squeaky um (laughs) and then like she would play like solitaire she would have some handheld like solitaire and tetris stuff so it's like there was just stuff around and then with having an older brother like it's like I mean I don't know I don't know again I swear it's like consoles just appeared like I can't remember us getting them I just yeah they were just around and so like I mean we had PlayStation 1 and so then you know my brother would mostly like it was in his room he'd be the one mostly playing it but then um I would have some games on it like the fucking Bob the Builder game (laughs) and so I would work with Wendy to decorate the cakes and I would uh, race the tractors and it was fucking awesome (laughs) and I think I had like a Winnie the Pooh game I don't remember that one honestly I really just remember no no it's coming back to me it's all coming back to me um but and then you know I liked some of the other games too in terms of like the racing games and stuff and we also did used to have like um you know, those, like, kind of, like, plug-in, like, you know, they would have the three colored cords, you plug them into the front of the TV, yeah. and, uh, yeah, so I had, like, a Spongebob one, and, Where it's, like, Spongebob's um, head, and there's a yes. joystick. Yes, and his nose was the joystick. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um... And then we had handheld devices in terms of, like, uh, we had the old black and white Game Boys, uh, and then we got the Game Boy Advance, the, like, uh, the flip-up flip up screen. With the color, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we got uh, Nintendo DSs. And then um, we got, you know, and at this point, uh, as the PlayStations are coming out, we're getting new, you know, upgrading. Right. Um, And then um, we had, and I don't know if a lot of people had these, but we had PSPs, um, PlayStation Portable. Yeah, Um, I didn't have one, but I know my cousins did, yeah. Which I'm like what happened to them? Um, My dad still has his, like still plays it, um, but, and it was like it was like decently fun actually no it was quite fun i yeah i vaguely i don't know some of my early games that i'm remembering right now i'm remembering like you know the like i feel like we played a lot of burnout um i don't know and just like i don't know like playstation 2 that was my fucking era oh i love playstation that was our first playstation was i think that was our (gasps) first console oh my god so i'm just having so many memories i specifically didn't prepare for this because i wanted it to just be raw Uh, (laughs) because also with the playstation i don't remember what i think was it called like i want to say it's called like i play but that doesn't sound right for elaborate what are you what they are you had a camera this was before the Wii. they had a camera you would set up and like you could do there was like a game that you could like do that was like the with your body yes it was playstation 2 i think so or three two or three huh i don't know what you're talking about but i feel like that it doesn't surprise me that something like that existed i feel like that's a very lost media thing that it could have been something that was like just never adapted into any of the other PlayStation consoles. Kind of like how the Game Boy had a mic, or the um, the GameCube had a microphone that was Uh-oh. just dropped off. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think it it makes sense to me because I think we 
like Nintendo like led the like right. motion games you know after that it was kind of like whatever you know for everything else mm-hmm. but um but I would say, like, especially in my childhood, I mean, like, I feel like my brother was more of the PlayStation play. I mean, I don't know. Again, we had such a mix of things, um, which as, again, as a kid who a lot of the time was in, like, double-legged casts, very good to have options. <laughs> um, and, uh, but we, I remember a lot of PC games, um, whether they were disc games, like, you, that you actually yes. put in the computer. CD-ROM. Yeah. Or, um... <laughs> <laughs> all of my 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 friends who are 10 years younger than me are just like huh <laughs> a floppy disk <laughs> <laughs> okay now we're not that old <laughs> i mean we had floppy disks in my computer class in element in elementary school but anyway um but i feel like you know on the computer it's like there was like some i feel like there were built-in game like we would play like the pinball game that windows had okay um and then like and then like my brother would discover probably through his other friends at school or whatever like um just like mini game websites um which was fucking huge um but also okay this is like rare lost media disney collection is it like disc games i don't remember that's oh. what kills me is it was like i i don't know if it was like a subscription and you download it i don't okay. know if it was a game i don't know what it was um but we had it for a period of time on my mom's computer and i ate that shit up i just the one game i specifically remember and i don't know if it was on disney collection or if it was on because i also played obviously a bunch of games on disney's website right um And so I don't know if it was on Disney Collection or if it was on Disney's website, but there was one where, like, you were at, like, Goofy's restaurant or something, and you had to, like, wait tables and park cars and stuff. I feel like that's a very Disney website game. It's kind of like how people are nostalgic about, like, the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody game that was on the Disney website. I wasn't, like... I think when it comes to games like that, I was never on them because... I was always the person that would play video games on our family's computer and get viruses. Um, oh, I was that no. type of person where, like, Mariah, we got to wipe the entire computer now because of you. There was a oh, game. No. There was a very specific one that was, I think it was, like, Wii Me. And you make little me's and you talk to your friends and stuff. But it was like, oh, like, download this extension and you get more clothes. Download the extension and now the entire computer doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, or no. like you get the pop ups that say like you want a free iPad. Hell yeah, yeah oh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always uh, that. So I wasn't really. I never really. I feel like I didn't play a lot of PC games unless they were a CD because otherwise our computer did not work. <laughs> and I feel like we didn't end up having too many CD games. I think because we could rely on, like, Disney Channel and stuff like that. Obviously, then there was also, like, uh, I feel like my next advance from Disney was, like, fucking, like, Webkins. uh, Was a big part of my childhood. How many do you think you had? Oh, like, 20. Yeah, I was gonna say, I I think I had, like, at least 15 at one point. My brother had a, a decent amount, too, but I don't think he cared for it as much. And then um, my third grade teacher is actually who introduced me to Club Penguin. Um, oh. Like, I don't know. One day we all made Club Penguin accounts and uh, that was that was some good shit. I, <laughs> I um, yeah, Webkins, I was definitely heavily on. That was like my my neighbor got us into Webkins and I got my first Webkins was a bulldog and I named him Dude. And then there was a hat in the store where it was a black beanie and it said dude on it. And I was like, holy shit, they make them for your pets? Like their names? <laughs> but no, I just got very lucky. Um, I remember my mystery prize from like web- my Webkins was a porthole that went on the wall that a fish like swam by at one point. Slay. Very slay. Um, I wasn't a big Neopets person. There was another game. Oh, there was like a Nickelodeon game that I'd play online that was like 
you talk to the characters from iCarly <laughs> and shit like that. Why do I have, like, I have, like, very little memories of the Nickelodeon games. Were they not as good? They I weren't don't... as good. I think because, like, Disney reigned supreme at the time for stuff like that. Because, um, I mean, like, I remember when I was in the hospital a lot as a kid and they'd give you a laptop to play with. I would mostly play this, like, Hannah Montana dress-up game where you made her own clothes and stuff. I'd play that for, like, six hours a day. I would, like, hyperfixate on one game on that website, and that was it. Like, that's literally all I remember. Where some kids were like, oh, I played this one, this one. Never did. That Hannah Montana dress-up game was the only thing I gave a shit about. I knew that I... <laughs> this is so pathetic. I knew that I um, could type without looking uh, when I would enter my name for the score at the end without looking like or like because I feel like I would type in like Hannah or Cass like I wouldn't necessarily always type my name right. in but I realized I could type like Hannah without looking and I was like oh, I'm a god <laughs> <laughs> god I just like I feel like I have so many Club Penguin memories though like to drag that back I remember reporting somebody on Club Penguin because their username had the word hell in it <gasps> and I was a narc as a child so you were not safe <laughs> Catholic you narc. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Catholicism was always like hell was a place not a not like a curse word so it was kind of just like <laughs> like I don't know like we're like you know still don't know where to stand on stuff like that but anyway um my club penguin name I literally like was so frustrated that I couldn't get a good username because all the ones I liked were taken that I just literally like punched the keyboard and that was my username. It, my username was F-A-Q-T, <laughs> which doesn't spell anything. Fact. Fact. <laughs> the French spelling of fact. <laughs> I love that. I was Waddler547. Okay, love. Okay. And on, uh, on Webkins, I was Unicorn547. Oh, what was I on Webkins? Why five four seven? Very unclear. I think my, <laughs> I think it was my dad's birthday <laughs> because we like. I remember my mom trying to help us like create usernames and passwords, and she like it has to be something that you remember. But it was always something she remembered, so it'd always be like my dad's birthday. <laughs> be like seven ten sixty one was my username. <laughs> um, but I had, I was always, even like my AIM username was Dragon Girl 57 It always oh, had to be some of the dragons have the time. But I'd only talk to like two people and then be like, okay. My favorite was like, oh, my brother will type for me because I'm going to the bathroom. But my brother would like take forever to type. So by the time I got back, he was still trying to spell out like, how are you to like one of my friends. And then I'd be like, okay, never mind. <laughs> um... Was there any, like, when you got started with games when you were younger, was there any, like, character that you were really interested in? Mm, I don't think so. I think, like, most of the time I really do feel like I was playing, like, games that, like, I, I, I feel like I didn't pick out a lot of my games. Right. And so, like, I was just happy to play whatever. Like, I don't know. I feel like... Yeah, I wasn't drawn to anything in in particular. Mm. I will say that I was absolutely fucking ride or die for Barbie horse adventures, though. I had a lot of those Barbie games like that. One Specifically, that was the one with PS2. the horse was missing. Was it yeah, the horse I don't missing? Know. Honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but I loved it. I love going back and like looking up on YouTube people playing those games and there are always there's will be always be a video and it's usually not them talking or anything it's just the playthrough and like I did that recently with like a Rapunzel game that I liked when I was a child there was like a pet shop game that I liked that um I played habitually every second I had it I played this pet shop game one day the CD got scratched never worked again and it was devastating to me it was like I couldn't I couldn't handle it um and like it was always one of those things where it's like once the disc stopped working it was like a one-off game where you kind of would have a hard time finding it again we got a lot of our games at target um and yeah i mean like there's a lot of disc games i played like cool math games is obviously like a really good website that you'd play video games on as a kid that's like where i first started club penguin um but i mean like the PS2 for me, I think, was the earliest console that I played. 
um because i think it was like right yeah it was like right before the gamecube because then after that it was like mostly nintendo games that you mm-hmm. know were in our house so the ps2 i was heavily into there was this like sesame street game i remember playing that was very like it it just made me <laughs> it was like obviously sesame street's like in new york so i'm like wow this is like just like new <laughs> you york. said obviously i never knew that <laughs> That's like the whole thing. <laughs> I don't remember. Wow. See, Sesame Street was big for us because we were like, wow, you can go there when, in fact, you could not. Because <laughs> it's not real. I'm sorry to break the bubble, guys. Um, but I remember playing that game on the PS2. And then, of course, I was really into Spyro the Dragon and mm. Crash Bandicoot, like, mm-hmm. heavily as a child. And it was like mariah you could like anything else but you gotta like the purple dragon and the orange fur- furry guy like i don't know what else you want me to do also the music in those games i'm pretty sure it's the same composer for both of them but at least for spyro the music was the best ambient music ever it just like i remember even using it for some of the music in like a radio project when i had in college because i was like Whoa. why the hell not man this like shit's the best Please don't get, I, I don't want to get in trouble for plagiarism. <laughs> I did not invent that song, but I, um, yeah, Spy the Dragon, the first three games. Um, it's, I love that, like, polygon, too. Like, the polygon textures in those games where everybody's, like, very, like, bulky and pointy. Like, it very much encapsulate, like, a really good time in early early video games where that it felt like such an open world game when really it's like no there's only like three levels per place like you really can't do much else did you ever two games i'm thinking of here did you play like the tony hawk pro skater games oh yeah oh yeah. Tony hawk <gasps> pro disney skater. skate disney skate no ate that shit up ate i did that go to disney on ice up. when i was younger does that count no. Like, uh, I skate play skateboard. Um <laughs> Oh wait, it was a skateboard game? Yeah. I feel like I remember something like that. I loved a lot of those one off games where it's just characters. Like Nickelodeon yeah. racing and stuff like that. Like, hell yeah, dude. And then um also Tekken. It was like no. fighting games. Okay. I was gonna say I, any fighting game it was super smash bros melee it was always uh like a nintendo based game i mean like we didn't even like play gta that much as a kid anyway like i never liked i never liked the heavy games like that i always would prefer a cartoony like animal as the protagonist <laughs> you know i think i actually I, I think the reason why i like let's play so much as an adult is because my brother's would not let me play video games when I was younger because they would always swear that I would delete something or I would do something wrong and like that sucks anyway (laughs) um I mean I did have my own Game Boy so I played a lot of games on there I remember playing a lot of I remember there was like a couple of Polly Pocket games that I liked on the Game Boy um the Pokemon the very early Pokemon (sighs) games Dude, or like the Polly Pocket game on the Game Boy. Fuck yeah, are you hell kidding me? Yeah, dude. Like a lot of those games were just like perfect. Like they were literally like developers could not mass like not mirror that stuff now. <laughs> Sorry no. guys. Um but I like I I'm very nostalgic for like the Legend of Zelda games that were on the GameCube when I was younger. Um they were shit that I just that shit slapped. Like Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask all be on the Game Boy or all be on the Game Cube. Oh man, that shit slept. I fucking I can't. Like and that's another one where it's like very like polygon esque, except Wind Waker is more like cartoony, but that was like a style that was never like was one that people thought was really weird for the time. They didn't like the shading of the characters and stuff and there were so many complaints at the time for Wind Waker, but I just remember reading the like, Game Informer magazines and being like, this shit's the best. Like, this shit rocks. Um, just being able to look up cheat codes and stuff inside the magazines. One of the games that I have the most vivid memories of is, ro- like, Rocket Power Beach Bandits um, for PlayStation 2, which 
I just I just remember a lot of the scenes I remember but like when I look it up now and look at the graphics I'm like oh my god it was really that bad (laughs) but I know exactly what you mean about the like polygon blob stuff yeah where it's like their faces are flat and they really tried to like emulate some like texture like a nose yeah then you look at them from the side and it's (laughs) nothing's there (laughs) the three games I feel like that I uh, like I don't know it's like I feel nostalgic for certain games, but games were like, I don't really know. Like, it's like different nostalgia for different games. Like, Mm -hmm. there's like Super Mario Sunshine, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and Luigi's Mansion are all like, it's like, you know, very early like GameCube games. But things that like their graphics like still hold up, like for that Mm -hmm. time, like um, the Paper Mario games, it was all just like 2D games and they're set in like different places so it's like you know the thousand year door one is like you have to collect like seven stars across the land to you know keep this enemy behind the door or like keep them sealed and stuff and uh you would like i just the graphics for that game were probably one of my favorite ones where like it was very spooky and it was very eerie and it just it also like which at the time i don't think it was like confirmed but it also it had a transgender character in it which i felt like was so early for Whoa. that time for nintendo to be like this character's like canonically trans yeah um and then there's like super mario sunshine which like that gra- the graphics for that game still hold up and i remember watching my brother play that game like christmas morning on our tv in our living room and just being like wow like this is the best it's ever gonna get <laughs> um and Luigi's Mansion, of course, was so spooky to me. Like, that that was another game where, like, that was supposed to be a lot scarier than what it came out to be like. But Nintendo was like, we can't show some of these really graphic things because this is a child's game. Like, yeah. if you ever look at the beta version for that game, for Luigi's Mansion, it's, like, horrific. <laughs> like, even Luigi looked completely different. Like, he looked, and, like, at points in the game when he would die, he would look very, like, sick and, like, ear, like, it was, like, gross it was like this how do you expect kids to not have nightmares from this game um but i fucking i i ate that shit up i just and also of course the bay uh sonic the hedgehog like sonic adventure 2 on i know that i think that was on multiple consoles but i no actually i think it was only for the gamecube at the time that game soundtrack to that game slapped there's so many good songs like escape from the city and the track that played for knuckles level and pumpkin hill are songs that i will add to like spotify playlists if i find like covers for them on spotify because i just they hit they hit a lot different than i I remember like being at a party in high school at a pool party and a cover of one of those songs coming on the kids spotify and i was like i haven't heard this song in almost like 10 years <laughs> like how the hell like it's always funny when other people have the same memories for certain video games like mm-hmm. that too and you're like wow can we like talk about this for a half hour please <laughs> <laughs> i feel like yeah i don't have a lot of those early like nintendo memories and i still don't feel very connected to like yeah like mario and like i don't know just right. all of that in general um because we weren't yeah i mean until we got a wii we weren't a nintendo household and even then we didn't really get like like i mean it was like with like the wii and stuff we got like just dance and like right. you know stuff like that um like one-off games yeah yeah and um i always wished that we had mario kart and i still wish i had mario kart but i um and if anyone has Mario Kart for a regular Wii and wants to get rid of it, um, give it to me uh, <laughs> or sell it to me for cheap. Um, because yeah, that's not so possible. <laughs> I want it so bad. Um, oh, like you were saying too about um about like your brothers not wanting you to play because um they were afraid to me. Del- because they were afraid you would delete stuff and whatever um yeah my brother and I weren't good at sharing we had very different tastes in games right uh it was a very big point of contention and then eventually he just kind of took it over as his thing like in terms of like uh, like we would receive like our joint Christmas present would be like 
PlayStation 3 or whatever, and I feel like it was, like, PlayStation 4, man, I don't really remember the difference between all of them, but, um, eventually it was, like, yeah, there was one year that that was, like, our joint Christmas present, and then I basically never got to play it, and Gosh. that was pretty devastating for me, because at that point, too, like, we had really kind of fallen out of, like, the Game Boy and Nintendo DS right. and stuff, so it's, like, and uh, all the PC games we had pretty much outgrown, so it's kind of just, like, huh, like, I was kind of left with nothing at that point, point. I feel like I didn't really play video games for a long time after mm. that. I don't think ever our consoles were ever shared gifts between the three of us. I think it was mostly shared gifts between my brothers. So that was kind of just like, well, it's not yours type of thing. I did have my own Game Boy. I had my own DS, um, which, of course, I covered with stickers and shit like that all over it. I remember my brother left, my brother left his Nintendo DS in the car one night. And it, conveniently, it was a night where someone broke into a car on our street, broke into our van, and took his DS. And the game in it, everything. And he was so upset because obviously your fucking DS got stolen on the one night that you leave it, like, somewhere that's not in the house. Oh. Um, and it was in the glove compartment, too. So it was even somewhere oh. where, like, the person was searching through the car, you know? Damn. And this was a time before ring cameras and stuff like that. So yeah. it was, like, no one ever found it. But if you ever see a red Nintendo DS floating around anywhere, it's most likely my brother's. Um, And, uh... I don't remember a game got stolen, but I remember he was really a pit. He was really pissed. Um, and I, uh, like, I remember there was a lot of games I tried to play on the DS. And this is a very, like, uh, niche memory of mine. There was, like, um, a Kid Icarus game, which is, like, if you ever played, like, Super Mario uh, Ultimate or, like, Brawl or anything like that. It's, like, the angel character pit, his games. And you'd have to play with the, the buttons and, or, like, you have to play with the stylus and the the d-pad at the same time but because i'm left-handed i could never do it because it was flipped for me oh and no. it was impossible i never was able to play that game <laughs> it frustrated me so bad because it was not meant for me i just had flashbacks of the lamest possible game i could have played on the ds and i can't even remember what it was called it was those brain games oh i love that shit yeah it literally just called brain games i had those oh, too yeah they were the best though. There's like there's that iconic gif of Beyonce playing the Nintendo DS and she's playing one of those games <gasps> where she's laughing to herself when she plays. Oh. I, th that game I remember because I was like, that's the one I had. Beyonce and I play video games together all the time. Nice. <laughs> oh man, I could sit here and talk forever about the fucking games that I liked and the games that I played. And it's so it's so bad. And like what are the another memory I have of mine is like I think I, I feel like I talked about this before, but, like, I, there was, like, a few years ago, they came out with, like, a re, they always, like, remake games. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's just, you know what, let them have it. The same way that the people remake movies, who gives a shit? Just don't see it. Don't participate in it if you don't want it. Um, because they remade all the Crash Bandicoot games and the Spyro games for, like, the newer generations, and they made them for, like, the PS4, and now they're available on all platforms type of thing. And um, I never got to play the Spider Dragon remake because it came out and, like, my grandma died the same day. So I just, like, always remember that game being, like, coming out, like, waiting so long for it, but then, like, coming out at, like, the worst possible time. Aww. And I don't know. I really want to, I do want to, my goal is to play it this summer because I can get it on the Xbox. But I just, I don't know, man. I love Spyro, though. I love that purple dragon. I will say that I think that One Direction Twitter replaced what video games <laughs> for me. <laughs> I mean, I just, like, I genuinely, I'm trying to remember, like, what I did, you know, after. It's like, because, yeah, like I said, I aged off. The, and not that I age, I mean, I, there's timeless games, but, like, it's like, I don't know. It's like I just kind of, yeah, grew out of playing the DS. Right. And, Game Boy and stuff, and I mean, I guess for a while I would sort of play Wii, and I did play, like, you know, my friends would come over in middle school and even into high school and stuff, and we would play Just Dance and stuff, and it was very fun. Yes. Um, or, like, even, like, not that long ago, I feel like, you know, uh, me and my friends were playing, like, bowling and tennis, and it was, yeah, it was very 
fun <laughs> and stuff, but um, but there was, yeah, definitely a big void in my life, and so I feel like I'm only just now starting to try to get back into it, and I feel like it's hard, too, because, like, okay, like, I got, like, a, a Switch light during um, right. quarantine, but... Um, but I haven't really thought much about getting more games and it's like, Mm -hmm. well, which I guess too, like the switches are still on the new ish side. So it takes time for games to come out, but I just, I'm bad at seeking out games, even though they're fun. Yeah. I mean, like I, uh, you know, I, like my brothers and I shared a switch but I recently got my own Switch Lite because of the Tears of the Kingdom game. I wanted to play that on my own and not wanting... I didn't want to share. I'm too old. <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, I got a job. I'll fucking buy a Switch Lite. So, um, I mean, like, I I do want to add, though, when we played the Wii... I, I think I've told this story before. But I don't know. Maybe I just told it to you. I think you just told it to me. And it's I already forget it, but I remember it being exhilarating. So... There was like when the Wii first came out and you got Wii Sports, of course. Um, Wii tennis was all the rage. You played Wii tennis all the fucking time. Oh, yeah. I played, I was in the living room once. I was a bystander and my brother and his friend <laughs> were playing Wii tennis. And my brother like swung his arm back so fast while I was walking behind him. I got smacked in the face with the Wii remote right above my eye, like eyebrow. I had to go to the hospital and get stitches because it was that deep of a gash. And I remember the nurse in the hospital was like, we literally see this all the time. <laughs> like, that people are coming in here with Wii-related injuries. And it's like, that's even with the with the wrist strap on. It was just like the way that he swung his arm back. I got hit in the face. I have multiple, like, I- I've always got, like, facial injuries like that. I remember <laughs> literally just gushing blood and having to go to the hospital because I got hit in the face with a Wii remote out of all things. Damn. The GameCube would never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm grateful for, for quarantine, though, because, you know, I yeah, I got the Switch Lite, which yes. I did. I really, at the time, at the time, I think I literally, that was all I could afford. And it didn't make sense for me to get, um, like, a full-on Switch, but I'm kind of, which, like, I don't know. I'm, like, it's kind of annoying because some games, like, you need the the controllers off of the device or whatever, right. but um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I, I, I'm mainly, as and see, and that's the other thing, too, is I hate having to figure out compatibility things, but I'm, like, can you play, like, Mario Kart? I deserve Mario Kart. Damn it. I love Mario Kart. I want to play Mario Kart. You could definitely play that without having to I take the controllers so. off. Well, because, like, they stop. I feel like they stopped doing that after the Wii because, like, you could play it on the Wii U and you didn't need the Wii. Like, that. the Wii U was the same thing as, like, a Switch where it's, like, the whole the handheld thing. Um, but the... Because I remember, like, Mario Kart... Like, I, I love the Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. That one, iconic. But, um... Man, I remember missing field hockey practice in high school to play Mario Kart um, at, like, 9 a.m. on a day where I should have went to field hockey practice, but I didn't. And then I wonder why I sat the bench. Bitch, you didn't even go to practice. You were busy being a gamer. Anyway. (laughs) um, No, yeah, because there was, like, Mario Kart 8 that I think that's available on. It's, like, Mario Kart 8 something for the Switch. And, yeah, you should be able to just play that without having to remove the Joy-Cons on the side. Um, because that's, like, my thing, too. I was, like, I don't play video games, like, other than my Xbox, where it's, like, required to play video games on your TV, I don't play them on the TV. Like, whenever I played Stardew Valley on the other Switch, I would just play it, like, sitting in my room. Like, I wouldn't play it on the TV. So, that was where I felt like getting a Switch Lite was just more practical for me. Because not only that, it's also, like, $150 cheaper. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the only downside is that it's still, you can still have the Joy-Con drift problem. But, like, my my thinking is because I'm the only one playing it, I'm not going to experience that as soon as I did with the, the other Switch. Because the Switch was being used by three people. So, of course, you're going to get the drift a lot sooner. Um, 
And like, I don't know, I think my Switch Lite is cute. When I first got it and I was holding it, I was like, this feels like a toy you get in like a McDonald's, like, Happy Meal. Like, <laughs> it doesn't feel like, it's not as cumbersome, it's not as heavy. Um, it just feels like, I'm like, this is like a lot more of like up my alley with like things of a, like a portable console for me right now. Like, I just like that I could just take this and the charger and that's it. I don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah, I will say I'm still a physical games person because I'm like, if I ever get worn out on a game, I do want to be able to sell it for cheap. Mm, that makes sense. Well, I mean, nowadays too, like, and that's like, you know, it's like the selling video games market is crazy. Like, that's why they always tell people like, do not go to GameStop to sell your games and stuff. You're better off posting them on eBay or Facebook Marketplace because GameStop will never buy it for how much it's actually worth. Like, there's, you know, my cousin sold his limited edition Call of Duty Modern Warfare um, Xbox 360, and that shit could have sold for, like, 800 fucking dollars on eBay, but when he sold it to GameStop, they, I think they ballparked him for less than what a normal Xbox 360 would even go for, so it's like, do not, like, (laughs) if anybody's selling something, it's like, sell it for hire man like you you have people out here that will buy that shit like you don't ever you know especially gamecube games stuff like that's not in production anymore like that shit's rare my brother um when he was over recently looked at our Wii because he was like yeah i was just saying that like Wii's that have the gamecube stuff built into them which i didn't yes. even know was a thing yeah um go for a lot more money and i was like i didn't even know that we had this built into our wii and uh, i don't know i'm just like no yeah because it's like this, there's um we that's the Wii we have is like that is you play gamecube games on it um because it was like I think the first edition when it came out was that mm-hmm. one. I think I think the Wii is like one of the best selling consoles like ever. Because um, I guess at the time it was just like hot. Like people <laughs> like a wireless controller. <laughs> like you know the concept of playing sports. Like and we fit gave everybody body issues. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, no, I was imitating the sound that it would make when you would stand on it what wouldn't it say it would say like it would make dramatic noises i like believe the, that the person on the oh like the we fit trainer would say shit yeah he yeah oh <gasps> god <laughs> oh my god i don't i wouldn't put it past them i feel like we got a we we got the we fit like got the board for it but i don't think we ever really like i don't know we were like i gotta exercise never mind <laughs> yeah no that was not i same thing yeah exactly i think like there there'll never be something better than the times where like that one summer where pokemon go was really hot (sighs) like nothing will ever emulate that or how animal crossing was during quarantine that community the bonding experience with those games oh my god unmatched the human experience was meant for stuff like that i could not agree more i yeah I living in the middle of nowhere though with Pokemon Go was not the best, <laughs> um, but I was going to shows and stuff, which was helpful. But I feel like to I don't know, I I didn't succeed very much in I don't know, but I I did have fun, um, and then, um, and then yeah, Animal Crossing was really really fun. We we bonded over that. Um, yes, I remember FaceTiming and playing Animal Crossing together. It's very fun, and I mean, I still enjoy it, but yeah, I feel like we've talked about before, like, you run out of stuff to do eventually, which yeah. is kind of, annoying. like, I don't, again, I, this is why I need to get into other games, um, which, like, Starting so Valley. the, you no, know, I was gonna say, the other thing I got into during COVID was, um, or I don't know if it was, I mean, it must have been, uh, was playing, uh, The Sims 4 on my PC, and then, um, after about six months of that, my laptop did an update and it never worked again. Not that it didn't oh. work, but it would make my laptop overheat. So literally on my goals list this year, um, was to, 
uh, figure out how I could play The Sims 4 again, and the answer was that I needed to get a new laptop, and so, um, I did, but I also wanted to get a new laptop for school anyway, so that way I could do my mapping on it, um, yes. so, glad I did that. That's um, like a although game I, itself. Right, it literally is, and, <laughs> um, you, you put it best in that I hyperfixate on that the same way I do The Sims, um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I honestly, I haven't played The Sims a bunch since I got it, though, but that's because I'm literally busy. Um, yeah. I would have to make time for it, and that's the other problem with video games, is I'm not good at making time for them. Um, but I think I am very interested in getting Zelda, but I, like, the, I want to get Breath of the Wild first, though, and, go, you know, go that route, but... I don't know like I think it'd be fun to like play through a game like that where it's not I mean like I mean yeah you could beat the game but like you can't run out of stuff to do I also no, think Mar yeah. you know like I like I also think like Mario Kart like that type of thing is fun because like it, the replayability is extremely yes. high like Animal Crossing you literally just it the replayability eventually especially when you play it as much as we did in 2020 yeah. it's like you yeah it's not the same so also, I'm just looking at the Polar Express DVD case on my uh, table and just remembering I feel like there was a Polar Express video game I and I would like to get a console and get, I would like to get whatever it takes to play that and play it right now. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love like remembering certain games like that. Throughout I never played it though. Like I, I but like, no, but I feel I'm like a Polar Express stan. It definitely existed. Like, I, cause I remember, cause it was ugly. Because I remember people were like, God, oh, the character models in it were like crazy looking, like the kids. Like, because yeah. they did a lot of like texture shading and stuff like that. And it was, everyone looked dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try to give oh, like God. shadows. I would eat that shit up though. I love Polar Express. But you have to play Breath of the Wild. You're legally obligated to. I'm going to serve you papers in court that says you I have mean, to play. I mean, like I said, I had fun playing it when I borrowed it from my cousins, but I just, yeah, I don't know. I think again with prioritizing myself i think it's hard for right. me to spend money on fun stuff um yeah because i mean like that game like you said you almost don't run out of things to do because like it will take like i played that game because for apparently i never left tutorial land <laughs> <laughs> she never left a great plateau bro that's embarrassing Although, i don't which... know how to play video games it makes <laughs> me feel dumb <laughs> in your defense you know what it is i also <laughs> was stuck on that level for a while because i i like and the type of person where like i'll butt mash through dialogue and then i'm like what am i supposed to do like i don't sit there and actually read it um because you know usually gives you an objective bubble afterwards so i'm like i'll just do the objective bubble um but then i i wouldn't so like that game i played for an entire year before i even right. beat ganon and even when you do um the save point brings you right back like the last save point you have at that point is the one right before you enter like Hyrule Castle so like you can just play everything like you can just do everything still like if you have unfinished quests or like anything like that like I never 100% of that game because like the Korok seeds were so hard to find I think there was what like 900 Korok seeds I could be getting that mixed up with Tears of the Kingdom but there's a lot to find so I was like what the hell am I sp I'm supposed to find all of these and like it takes up such a huge percentage of like things to do in the game that once I got all the shrines done the divine beasts the towers all this extra things like I still wasn't even close to like 100% in the game and like realistically I would have liked to try to 100% it before Tears of the Kingdom came out but I was like it takes too long and then it's hard to like remember the controls because like not all games are the same so like the shooting in Fortnite is a lot different than like the shooting or not the shooting but like even just attacking in breath of the wild like everything's so different so i'm like you it takes a while to like kind of get back into playing a game like that yeah well and that was actually i think that's a like the control thing is actually why like i had a hard time getting back into playing the sims when i was able to because it's like shortcuts and like how to just like yes. move things and do things and especially on pc it's yeah it's uh, until you remember all the keyboard shortcuts and like i don't know it's i think it's fun i just i don't know i need i I imagine that, like, all this stuff can be more a part of my life when I'm not in school, because it's, like, right now, yeah. it's, like, 
school takes up so much time. It's like, eventually, I'm just gonna be at a place where I have work and nothing outside of that besides existing as a person and, like, you know, yeah, doing fun things or, I mean, obviously, like, organizing and stuff, but, like, you know, more me control. Yeah. yeah, more more me things. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I'm very. I'm kind of getting to that this year. Like, I have a lot of games that are on my like to playlist. Ooh, that's a good list to have. Yeah, man. I got a whole thing that's called Hot Gamer Girl Summer, and like, I just keep track of shit. Even though if I don't even plan to play it during the summer, I just like I'll write down the video games that like I played when I was a kid that I want to replay now, or things that I like have. Like, like I've said in a previous episode with like Xbox um, Game Share. There's like things that my brother like has that because he logged into my xbox i can now have so like i really want to play the resident evil remakes the second and the fourth one and i want to like really get back into like heavily into stardew valley i would like to 100 percent that game because i think i'm very close um i want to like i don't know part of me wants to like restart an animal crossing island but like it's a lot of work so i don't know if i really want to get into it I'm one of one hundred percent Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh yeah, I think one hundred percenting the museum would be so satisfying. But it seems like such a pain in the ass to do it. It's like it's like you not have to fun. play. Every, you would have to play like every day to like collect the right stuff. Yeah. And even like you know like the seasons to catch all the like I think I caught all of the the spring and summer bugs and the fish. But then after that, I I didn't catch anything else. Like I didn't like complete any of the other seasons. Um, but it becomes a lot. So, you know, I also have Animal Crossing Well, and they keep adding stuff. Yeah, like, they kept adding stuff. Like, I don't think, they haven't done a big update in a very long time. I think it's been over a year since they've done an update for Animal Crossing. At least something that added a lot of new content to it. I don't know. I hadn't played in a while, and then I log in, and there's fucking farming, and I'm like, go away. Yeah, the farming I wasn't really a fan of, because... I don't know. I just I was like n- it. I couldn't even figure out the fucking flowers. I I'm bad <laughs> at video games and actually that's why I don't play. <laughs> because if I'm not good at something immediately then who cares? I get that. I feel like it it I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times I would play something like that as like for community aspects like Fortnite was very, something that was like a heavily like a duos game for me for a while where you play with two people and like so when I play by myself it's still fun but like it's just not it's not as enjoyable without friends and same thing with like Call of Duty because there's a lot of like multiplayer options um but like I don't know I really want to get back into like playing spooky games like I I'm a huge fan of the franchise Five Nights at Freddy's which is cringe because I feel like it was a game that was mostly for kids. Okay, here's the thing. It came out when I was in high school. I remember watching Markiplier play it and watching all of these, like, YouTubers play it. And it is a scary game. Like, a lot of jump scares and shit like that. But, like, over time it evolved into this, like, really heavy story. And the movie is coming out later this year. And I would really like to actually, like, I remember I played the second one. But that was the only game I actually played. Because, But all the other ones I'm pretty sure are still on... Like, they're on Xbox or, like, on Steam, and they're mostly, like, a couple bucks or they're free to download. Like, and a lot of them, like, there's only, like, certain ones that fit into the core storyline, and I'd really like to play those. Um, Because, like, I don't know, I think it's, like, really cool when, like, people, like, create these whole stories and, like, give a shit about this, like, franchise that they're building. And it was something where, like, the creator of the game like tried to make an animatronic game that was kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese but it was supposed to be fun but he got a a lot of reviews saying that his designs are really scary and like unnerving so he really just went full force with that and made a scary and unnerving game which I'm like dedication bro turn those haters into fans (laughs) (laughs) um and same thing with like the Silent Hill games and stuff like that I really want to I don't know I just love video games that have this very complex lore I'm like, hell yeah, give it to me, dude. Fuck yeah. (laughs) I want nothing to do with scary games. Only fun games, no thoughts. Zelda might almost be too much (laughs) thoughts. (laughs) But um, I will say that, like, I feel like um, 
quitting Twitter is opening up the realm of... Again, like I said, if One Direction Twitter filled the void of video games, if I get rid of Twitter (laughs) ten years later, then maybe I will play video games. And I think that's a great reason to delete Twitter. Because you're so right. You will have so much time to play video games. So... I don't know, man. I think I gotta delete Twitter, too, because that, it sounds so nice to be like, wait, I have more time to play video games if I get rid of Twitter. That's three hours of the day that I get back. Facts. And that was just on your phone. Exactly. And especially when I got my Switch now, because I can play on the Switch, and I got my Xbox yeah. in my room, and I can play in my room. And if I'm not doing markets this summer, <laughs> I can play video games. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, I'm a full-time gamer. Leave me alone. <laughs> Please. Like I say, if I... If I jumped on the streaming trend when it was big, I probably could make, uh, I probably could have made a million dollars by now, but it's, it's just, you know what, it's better to play video games for fun and not for Yes, money. not everything has to be monetized. We don't have to monetize our hobbies, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I can't wait for the future of video games and to see what other things come out of the woodwork and just like being able to have this time to get back into playing games and to like really dig my nails into this like nostalgia you know like childhood nostalgia for games because like I ever like since I played Breath of the Wild and now playing Tears of the Kingdom it just makes me realize how much of a masterpiece that like Legend of Zelda games are and like there's so many different uh there's so many different time like although people like hate that there's like oh there's like there's like three different timelines for these games that they follow and people hate that they hate that idea and I'm like I think it makes sense like when you look at like certain game stories and stuff like that and like the protect like you know the antagonists and stuff like that that are in the games so I'm like really excited to get back into like I really want to experience a lot of those games for like it's like not for the first time but like for the first time like as an adult where you can actually like appreciate good storylines like where you can appreciate good storytelling And, you know, I really want to get back into, like, the remake games that I was talking about um, because I just love that. Like, I don't know. I also, like, feel like nowadays with, like, TikTok and stuff, people, like, it's, you, you, like, the video game content on TikTok is crazy. I constantly see Tears of the Kingdom videos on TikTok or, like, Resident Evil ones. Whereas, like, when I first played Breath of the Wild, I feel like I barely saw anything on Twitter even for the games. So I'm like, I feel like nowadays the communities are so much bigger and you can really find like so many more people to talk to and like, I don't know, funny memes. Like it's, it's funny to just be like, oh my God, I get it, you know? (laughs) So I want to get back into that. Um, And yeah, I mean like, you know, just the expansiveness and the amount of shit that's going to come out, you know, or like a lot of new, a lot of these games having updates, like things like Fortnite um stardew valley you know the creator of that game is working on a new one that's called haunted chocolatier which i'm really excited for don't know i don't think it's going to come out this year though i think it's going to come out next year because i know he said he's still working on it and he's a very like don't rush me (laughs) type of vibe which i love because like i don't know you can't rush it like that like it has to you know it was like the same reason why like tears of the kingdom was supposed to come out last year but nintendo was like no we're actually pushing it back like a, a full year because we want it to be the best game and they did that they did that shit like I think the creator of the game was like yeah we had like so much time to actually just make it perfect with like the physics and stuff in the game which I appreciate that because who you know everyone would have hated it if it was not good like it had to at least like fill the shoes that Breath of the Wild like had I love that yeah I think um I think the community aspect is huge and I think that's what made me enjoy Animal Crossing. I literally like when something is popular like in the same way that like you're amped about Zelda it's stuff like it's just it makes it so much more exciting because you're like wow we're all enjoying this thing. Yeah like I love seeing tweets on Twitter where it's just like suggested things where people are like, oh my god, this enemy, or like, this thing, and like, although sometimes it, it does suck, because you, it does spoil it for you, if you really don't want to see certain stuff, but I don't know, I, I was like, my thing is like, it, it's, as long as it's not spoiling, like, the main storyline, I'm okay with being like, oh, there's a new enemy in this area of the map that was not here before, you know. Yeah, this, this whole conversation makes me want to 
play games. So, yes, love that. Gamer girl summer. Yeah, you. Please talk to me about video games. It's like the only thing I care about, bro. <laughs> You're gonna just—I uh, I was like, you're gonna just have the worst guys sliding into your DMs, and then I I'm just like, anyway. no, they're—they're—they're <laughs> they're, they're, they're not listening to this. No, they're not. They're—I I mean, that's the thing too. Is like, anytime that I would have games on my like Hinge profile, people would be like, oh yeah, I want to hear you talk about this. I'm like, if you cannot contribute to the conversation, I don't want to talk to you about this. Yeah. Like, what don't you get? You no, I'm not gonna talk to you about like. Uh, I'm not going to explain a game to you. Like, you have to already come in here knowing what I'm talking about and can just add to the conversation. Like, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. So to finish off this episode, we are going to do a segment, which we've done before in the past, where we just name a few things that we're grateful for currently. So... Cassie, what are you most grateful for right now? Um, I guess, like, the main thing really is probably therapy. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that it holds me accountable to, like, well, I mean, like, obviously, like, I resumed going because I had things that needed fixing, and I think it just helps hold me accountable, and, um and yeah I mean that's like probably the biggest thing right now and I am also grateful for how much I'm enjoying my classes this term and um you know the term's almost over so that's huge and um excited that I'm making myself a priority as I'm about to go into having I mean I would say having a lot less work to do but I mean I am gonna have like my summer internship and stuff but like still right. that's I feel like I don't know I feel like it'll be more structured so it'll feel like I have more time outside of doing that as opposed to like classes which is kind of with online classes it's kind of whenever I'm working on them um, right and stuff so um yeah I don't know I'm grateful for I don't know I guess self-improvement working on my mental health all that good stuff and oh, yes. the the prospects that come of that yeah yes how about you right now i don't know i honestly don't really know what i'm too grateful for i guess i feel very neutral about things like if anything i'm kind of grateful that like i'm in this phase in my life right now where i'm kind of just like uncertain about like my future and myself and stuff like that and like learning to live with that and learning to just sit with those feelings because sometimes I, you know, I really want to rush this era of my life and, like, try to find some purpose, <laughs> as we all are. But I think that, like, you know, allowing myself to, like, be like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And, like, that's that's a period. Like, that's a full sentence sort of, or that's a full idea sort of thing. Because, um, I don't know. I just feel like allowing myself to kind of, like, allow myself to have room to breathe is very important to me and just having time to figure out kind of what I want to do in my future and things like that that's beautiful not saying I don't have things to be grateful for in life I do think some, when you name things are like I'm grateful for like you know like food on the table house over my head like type of things it's like they're very mundane but they also are very important but they're also things that like I don't know like I feel like I just feel very neutral about my life right now, but, like, in a good way, where it's not, like, I feel, like, this impending doom of trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. It's, like, no, like, I'm okay to just, like, coast for this summer and to work and to do markets and shit like that when I want to and when I can, but then otherwise just, like, learn to be more content with, like, my direction. I think that's beautiful. I think being grateful for uncertainty, that's yes. that's a cool that's a very cool place to be in my opinion. Yeah, and it's also a very big thing for me cuz I've yeah. always been scared of like change and the unknown and things like that. So I think to just be able to like sit in it and kind of just like wade in these waters is very marinate. <laughs> Literally, I'm marinating, bro. I'm making my own stew over here like <laughs> just chilling in the crock pot <laughs> hell yeah dude what's better than that um i don't know i'm just looking forward to just having like i'm looking honestly i'm looking forward to this summer in the way of just like being able to like sit outside on like our patio furniture and then just experience nature like 
like I'm excited to go on vacation later this you know later this season because I'm excited to just sit in like the water and the sunshine and ride my bike and just like exist and have an actual relaxing time dude I feel like we're at such similar places in life right now in terms of like yeah just like contentedness and yeah being more present and just yes chilling enjoying life and chilling well that's a wrap on this week's episode be sure to follow the cassie and mariah show wherever you listen to podcasts at tcms pod on twitter and instagram and look out for new episodes every wednesday bye, bye.